a season of praise. I don't know what you've been through, but as I look back over my life, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have. A season of praise. A season of praise. In Acts 16 and verse 25, it just simply says this. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, a season of praise. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we lift you up and give you glory for everything that touched us today. For your, the visitation of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Yes, yes. That continues to touch us. Every morning we wake up. Yes. And we only wake up because we know that we're blessed by the best. Yes. And that you are. So as we listen to this message, through this vessel that you chose for this morning, we ask that you would speak. And that itself be moved out of the way, that you will shine through as a ray of light. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 1625 in Acts, it says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Signed. At a praise party in jail. In the situation that got them in jail, you wouldn't think that would put them in jail. Because the story before that goes that it was this um, slave girl that was following Paul and Silas around. And the slave girl, the Bible says in the King James Version, she had a spirit of divination. She was under witchcraft. She was a soothsayer, fortune teller. And as Paul and Silas was walking and doing their ministry and praising Jesus and just preaching Jesus, this girl mocked them by coming behind them saying that these men preach the way of salvation to us. You need to hear them. And then one would wonder, why would Paul be annoyed with this girl, this soothsayer, this fortune teller, Mocking what he says, telling them the truth. Why would he be upset when she did that? But because he was annoyed that she did that. And the reason why he was annoyed, Paul knew if he had accepted the words of that demon possessed girl, because she was possessed by a demon, because she was under witchcraft, she was under. Um, uh, she was under demon possession, if he would have accepted that action, and if he would have accepted the words of the demon possessed girl, he would have appeared to be linking the gospel with demon related activities. That's why he was so annoyed and upset. That's like a church having a Halloween party. You are linking the gospel with satanic activities. And even saying that, some people confused, and they were still saying, why can't you think of a Halloween party? Witches, warlocks, demon stuff. Why would you want to link that with a church of God? So this is why Paul was so upset. 
This is why Paul was so upset. So Paul did the best thing that he could for this girl who was demon possessed and for the situation. He delivered her from the demon. He told the demon to come out of the girl. The demon came out of the girl that same hour. But in that hour, when the demon came out of the girl, her masters and the people that owned her saw that they couldn't make no more money or no more profit on her because they were making profit on her by what she was saying because she was pro, um, predicting what Paul and them were saying or just attaching on to what they were saying and her masters were making some money on her. So what had happened was, after they found they couldn't make no more money on her because the demon was gone, they had gone to uh, and attacked Paul and Silas. They beat them. They had lied on them, and they had thrown them in jail. Thrown them in jail. And you figure that Paul and Silas, why would you get thrown in jail for doing God's work? Why would people hate you for doing what God had called you to do? Why would people do that? So we found them bloody, battered, and torn. The Bible says at midnight, bloody, battered, and torn, they started to praise God, and they started to sing. Which makes us wonder, when is the best time to praise the Lord? When is the best time to praise the Lord? When is the best time to praise the Lord? See, some of us think the best time to praise the Lord is when God does something for you. See, God had answered my prayers, and since he had answered my prayers, now I want to praise the Lord. What if God don't answer your prayer? What if God don't say a word to you? Is he still worthy to be praised? When is the best time? Praise the Lord. Oh, when is the best time to praise Him? Can you praise Him now? Can you praise Him if you're down now? If you didn't have no turkey, can you still praise Him? Hallelujah. Most of you got stuff you can't praise Him now. You're sitting back. Oh, but I'm just trying to work it out. You need to get up. You need to take that turkey off. You need to tell God, thank you. Thank you. When is the best time to praise the Lord? When is your season of prayer? Yeah. Too many times we pray for God to do something for us. God, if you answer my prayer, then I will. Then you will what? Yeah. What can you do for God? What if he don't do nothing? Then what you going to do? Exactly. So, here's Paul and Silas, whipped, beaten, battered, bloody, in jail, on the floor, rats crawling across their feet, and then somebody had to get up a song and start singing and praising God what he has done for us. Yes, we were out there. Yes, we had to live with that girl. Yes, we had done what God had told us to do. These men threw us in jail, but we still got reason to pray. We still got reason to sing. We still got reason to praise God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Because sometimes praise is going to go your way. Sometimes people are not going to do what you think. Sometimes people are just not going to do what you say. Can you still praise the Lord anyhow? Can you still praise him anyway? Oh, yeah. So when is the best time to praise the Lord? Oh, yeah. See, we need to get out of this mindset, if you do for me, then I'll do for you. Yeah. You know, because when we get like that, sometimes people get mad. And they get mad, they don't want to deal with you no more. You know what? Somebody should be able to make you mad. You can just say, I can praise the Lord anyhow. Yeah. People get mad and go come to church. Well, they didn't give me a phone call. They didn't write me a letter. They didn't send me a postcard. And you know what? Are you coming here because of people or because you're coming to praise God? When's the best time to praise the Lord? You know, more times than that, people focus on all that is wrong. People always focus on all that is wrong with the world. People always run to the negative stuff. People run to the gossip, run to the um, backbiting, run, always run to the negative stuff. You know, when we should be focusing on all that is right with God and in God and in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because focusing on what's in Jesus Christ is much better than focusing on everything that was wrong. When we focus on what's in Jesus, we'll always want to praise God. We'll always want to just tell him thank you. All that is right with God, that's what we need to focus on. So this is our Lord's season of praise right now. And this season, you know, I want to, you know, challenge all of us to focus on what's right with Jesus. You can always find something wrong. Don't take you two seconds. You can always find something wrong. You ever been around somebody that's always negative? Amen. You hang around somebody now that's always negative? Amen. Come on, I know y'all do. That should have been a lot of amen. Amen. Yeah, you sure do. Well, you need to 
Tell them now that you're in a season of praise. But get the negative. You need to concentrate on what's positive. What's in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know what? Yes, you will have good days. Because for all of them, if you consider that day that they had, that was a very bad day. But yeah, we're going to have good days. And if we have good days, praise the Lord. Yeah, we're going to have days that are indifferent. If we have been different days, praise the Lord. Yes, we're going to have, can I say it, bad days. But if we're going to have bad days, you need to praise the Lord in the house. Hallelujah. You need to praise the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. So praise takes everything, praise takes everything negative out of life. Because we're going to have good days, we're going to have bad days, we're going to have days that we say, I don't know. But we still need to praise him anyhow. We're going to have days like that. But we're going to find that praise takes things out of life. Praise takes things out of life. What does praise take out of life? Praise takes fear out of life. You ever been fearful? You can't be fearful and praise at the same time. Right. If you're going to praise, you're not going to have fear. That's right. And if you're going to have fear, you ain't praising. So I tell you what, I'm going to praise and cut loose the fear. Because praise takes the fear out of life. I tell you, you ever have worry? Somebody probably came in here worried. You came in worried, you came in with something on your mind. You know, praise takes the worry out of life. Yes. Because you can't praise and worry at the same time. Anything negative praise will take it out of your life. Yes. So if you're a worry boy, you know, praise will take that out of your life. Uh, I'm too heavy. I'm too light. I ain't too much. I ain't too little. I didn't have what I want. Oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to stop all that and just praise the Lord. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. For everything that you've done for me. You can't thank Jesus and worry about all that mess all at the same time. Hey, you ever been in you ever been in um, stress? Praise takes stress out. You don't gotta be stressed out if you pray. You know you feel stress coming on, all you gotta do is thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, will knock out stress in a minute. Don't gotta run to the cabin and get no pills or nothing. Don't gotta get tired of all five, six, or seven. All you need to do is just say thank you, Jesus. If you thank Jesus, Jesus will take all that stress away. Oh, yeah, you can lay back and say, thank you. Ah! Because he will take it away if you praise. Praise takes everything out. Praise takes anxiety out of life. If you're all anxious and always sound and wonder, but what, what is this happening? What is that? You can't praise and do all that jittery all at the same time. You praise Lord, anxiety will go. Because anxiety can't operate with praise. None of these things can at the same time. Hey, anybody got drama? Can't you Lord have drama at the same time? And look, all of these things I think, they are addictions. We always look at drugs and alcohol addictions. These are addictions too. Because some people can't live without this stuff. Some people can't live without fear, worry, stress, anxiety, or trauma. Some people, that's why soap operas are a billion dollar business. You can't live without the drama. That's why Tyler Perry made it so big. Everybody goes to see Tyler Perry, everybody wants to see the billion full out of guns. Because they like the drama. Because it's addictive. But you don't have to have it in your life. It might be entertaining, but you don't, it's entertaining when it's on stage, but when it's in your life, it ain't funny. So you don't have to have the drama. All you got to do is praise the Lord. The praise of God will get the drama out of your life. It will get the drama out of your life. And it will push you to something more productive. Something that you need to do. Something that God is calling you to do. So hey, praise takes drama out of life. If you ever had conflict, if, some of, if, look, if you live, you had conflict, if you want to live or not. Praise will take conflict out of your life. Praise will knock it right on out. You got trouble with somebody, all you got to do is praise the Lord. God will take care of it before you even get there. Because sometimes when you're in conflict, if you praise God, God will handle the conflict before you live. You know, Jesus said, how do you handle it? Jesus said, well, when you're in conflict, he said in his word. You don't have to even think about what you said. All you got to do is give it to the Lord. God will give you the words, what to say when you get to the spot. But sometimes, you know, we try to handle conflict ourselves. And you know how we handle conflict. Everybody know how we handle conflict. Well, if you say this, then I'm going to say that. And if you say that, then I'm going to say this. And if you say that, then I'm going to say this. And if you say that, then I'm going to say this. And I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, then I'm going to say this. <laughs> Isn't that how we handle it? And instead of looking in the mirror, the praise, you're looking in the mirror to find out. Look, remember earlier I said we look in the mirror, we see a miracle? Now we look in there and we practice. 
You crack the sound, we're going to argue. <laughs> then you look in the mirror, and you look at me, and you turn your lips, and you just... Anybody been tormented? Oh, God. I mean, tormented. I mean, some, you know, tormented. Torment is a cousin of fear. If somebody torments you, beat you down, you know, um, say they're not going to be with you, they're not going to be your friend if you don't do this or don't do that. Forget about all that stuff. Praise. Amen. Praise God. If somebody don't want to be your friend, don't let them be your friend. Because if somebody gives you an ultimatum like that, they got you a fear that they're going to break friendship and you feel all tormented about it, you need to cut them loose anyway. You don't need them. Dude, man tell the woman, I'm going to walk out. Well, walk out. Walk out. Let him walk out. If she want to walk out, let him walk out. Go. You know, you don't need that grief in your life. Praise God. He's going to take that out of your life anyway. He will tell you, look, you just come to Jesus. Jesus will take, take care of you. And Jesus will have you. You don't need to have all that torment and all that stuff in your life. People torment you, beat you down, got that foot up all over your head, and you can't move. So that happens. When you pray, it takes all that out of life. And we can have praise and think, think about our problems at the same time. Yeah. You can't praise and have problems at the same time. Mm -hmm. Think about it. And dwell on it. Praise will release you from your situation. Mm -hmm. Praise will give you the answers to what you see. But if we dwell on the problems, that's us dealing with it. The Bible tells us we need to give it to Jesus. That's why we have all the calls so we can give to Jesus. When we give to Jesus, he will take care of the um, problems of the situation and we can keep on going praising God anyhow. And right now, we're in a season of praise. And we need to think about that. And all these addictions that we have, we need to let these things go. And just give it to God. Because people have been mad for years because of an addiction. Because of, they got mad at somebody and just mad for just stay mad. Then after a year, they're wondering, why, why am I mad? Well, I know I'm mad, so I'm going to stay mad. <laughs> That's an addiction. Yeah. Hey, look, no doctor can give you a healing for it, only the Lord. And if you praise the Lord, you'll be rid of the addiction. So, as we look, we cannot praise and think about the problems at the same time. And this is our season of praise. This is our season of praise, and what we need to do is just praise the Lord. Just right. give God some praise. Everybody just feel like praise the Lord. Oh! 